Welcome to the Choosing Cheer podcast, the show about the joy of Jesus in all of life's moments. I'm your host, Nicolette Bell, and my hope is that you'll see His joy is not dependent on your circumstances, but rooted in His presence. Let's go there together. Hey friends, I'm excited for this week's episode because we're doing something a little bit different. The Choosing Cheer podcast is part of the larger JourneyWise network of three different shows. And one of those shows is hosted by our founder and CEO, Shane Stanford. It's called the You Matter podcast. I had the privilege of being interviewed as a guest on You Matter. And as our producers and I listened back through the episode, we all thought it would be a good idea to share it here with you on Choosing Cheer as well. So I'm usually the one doing the interviewing, but today I will be the one being interviewed. This gives a unique lens and a different conversation rhythm that we all thought was really inspiring. In this season of Choosing Cheer, we're talking about finding the joy of Jesus in life's everyday, ordinary moments. And that's absolutely what we discuss on this episode. I share about the origin of the concept of Choosing Cheer, bits and pieces of my personal journey to live it out, and practical steps to experiencing more of the joy of Jesus in your life. Shane was the founding pastor of the church plant I grew up in. He's now my boss, my mentor, and my friend. I can't wait for you to hear him on the show today, and I want you to give the You Matter podcast a follow and a review. Friends, I think today you're going to be reminded of what it means to choose cheer, why it matters to me, and why I think it should matter to you. Let's jump into the conversation. I am so glad to be here. I'm probably You Matter's uh, maybe number one fan. I listen to all the episodes and am really honored to get to be here today. Well, thank you. And it is an honor for us to have you. Why does the, the topic of cheerfulness, why is that such a big topic for you personally? So you touched on it a little bit, Shane. I did grow up as a cheerleader. I grew up in a family of cheerleaders. Actually, my mom was a collegiate cheerleader. I had cousins that were uh, cheerleaders in college and kind of all down the way. And so I say that I had a pump a pom-pom in my hand before I could walk, I think. So it was just kind of ingrained in me and I was raised up in it. But my mom always taught me that cheerleading was more than just a sport that I participated in, but it was a mindset that I was supposed to have as a follower of Jesus. And in middle school, I got asked to lead a devotion for my cheer squad. And I looked up verses on cheerfulness. And I found this passage in John 16, 33, where Jesus says to his disciples, in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That passage at that moment just stuck with me. And it just has grown with me throughout the years. In middle school, it meant something very different than it means to me uh, today. But long after uh, I've retired my pom-poms and I can no longer do a backflip, um, that is out of the question. <laughs> uh, but that truth still remains with me. And even more so as an adult um, than as a child, that Jesus promises us trouble, but he also promises us the end result that he's overcome the world. And when we keep that in mind, we can have his joy, we can experience his cheer in any circumstances. And we find that our cheer is rooted in him and not in the the place we find ourselves in the world. Mm. Well, and so I'm going to ask you this first question, um, about this because I am not naturally a cheerful person. In fact, the, 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 the rule around my house is don't jolly dad in the, early in the mornings. Uh, I, I've always just been that person. And I don't know why I'm wired up that way. I just am. I do love joy and I seek joy. But, but where have you found it the hardest for you to be cheerful in life? Or maybe have there been experiences or patterns in life where it's been the most difficult for you to, to be that way? Well, I think that um, for most of us, and certainly for me personally, it's most challenging to be joyful when things don't go the way we expect them to. So for me, it has been in seasons where I have prayed for something or longed for something and have felt like I didn't get the answer that I wanted or even the answer that I thought uh, was the right one. <laughs> and it's hard to continue to have joy and hope and to believe in Jesus's goodness when things don't go the way 
that we expect them to. And, and in my personal journey, I say that this saying, this concept, choosing cheer, really the rubber hit the road um, during a season of infertility in mine and Preston's um Preston, my husband's uh, journey. And we um, figured out very early in our marriage that I had um, a disease that was going to make uh, having children for us um, very difficult and and really highly unlikely. Um, And so at the outset of our journey, had a pregnancy loss uh, that was very uh, devastating to me to have great hope and joy. We were told we couldn't get pregnant. We probably weren't going to be able to get pregnant. And then we were able to get pregnant. And then to have that uh, joy and uh, hope just kind of taken away in um, a moment. And so for me, that was kind of the onset of a three-year journey. I launched Choosing Cheer as an online ministry, a blog at the time, because that was where uh, the happening things were, was on a blog at the time, in September. And then I lost our baby in February of that next year. And so it was almost as if I felt the Lord was going like, you are preaching this, you are teaching this, but do you really believe it? When trouble really comes, like I thought I had experienced trouble or hurt before, um, but in the sense of like that intimate loss in a way that I didn't, uh, I had no concept for that before experiencing that. And in that moment, it was like the Lord was like whispering to me, now, do you really believe what you've been teaching? One of the things that we came up with as a possibility for the name of the ministry was uh, Chasing Cheer. Or, or Like we had different words that we put on the front of it. But in the end, it, to me, it was so obvious that it had to be Choosing Cheer because it is a choice day after day after day after day to seek the joy of Jesus, even in hard circumstances. And I think so many times people don't realize that. They think that they're at the mercy of every situation or every Mm -hmm. circumstance. And I have certainly experienced a good bit of that in my life and saying, you know what? No, I'm going to choose joyfulness. I'm going to choose cheer. Uh, I'm going to choose a positive outlook. I'm going to choose... and that, the, the fact that you get to a situation like your situation or my situation and you feel like you have no choice in anything, knowing that you do have a choice to choose a, a better response, a better way to live through that, that really can be the difference a lot of times, don't you think? I absolutely do. And I think that that is, you know, learning we have to learn in those situations that joy is is not something, while it is a choice, it's not something we can just muster up or come up with on our own or in our own strength or our own power, that joy is a fruit of the spirit of Jesus. And so it's something that bubbles up in us when we spend time with him, when we pursue him, when we are close to him, um, then we are able to have that joy, hope, peace, all of the fruits of the spirit because because we are seeking Him. It's nothing that we can really do on our own strength, but it's still a choice that we make. Well, can I pause you right there? Because I think a lot of times with fruits of the Spirit, people think love being the first one Mm -hmm. is the ability to love everything else in the world. Actually, I think a fruit of the Spirit is the love that we have for God first, Mm. to be able to share that love back with Him. And then the fruit of that experience, that love is joy. Mm. And that is exactly what you're talking about. And I can't imagine, uh, even with all that I've been through, I cannot imagine a situation as personal and as difficult as what you went through. Because here you have this life that you've prayed for, and now it's not gone the way that you thought it would. And choosing cheer in that circumstance, when I know there's a probably a hundred people whispering in your ear going, it's okay to feel anger, it's okay to feel this, it's okay to feel that and you're choosing cheer in that circumstance, you know, that that's about like, am I going to choose the life raft or am I going to choose, you know, to just try to keep swimming? And it makes no sense to try to keep swimming if you have a life, la- a life raft there. But so many people choose because it's the strong way to look. I'm going to choose, you know, this other direction that doesn't lead to the kind of strength that you're talking about. Uh, let me ask you this question. What are some practical ways, so you're facing this choice, what are some practical ways to train yourself up to choose cheer uh, in, in your life? 
Yeah, I think, you know, the first thing is is kind of what we just mentioned, that remaining close to Jesus. Um, this passage in John 16, 33, that choosing cheer is rooted in is right after in John 15, where Jesus says, abide in me. And you got to stay in the vine. You have to stay close to me. And when we remain in him and we find our identity, our hope and everything in him, then we're able to to have cheer in the face of trouble. Um, I think another practical way to really kind of understand this or uh, think about this is just, you have to tell yourself the truth. The adversary can get in your head and tell you lies. And it's lies that we come up with on our own and then lies that the world around us tells us. In my fertility journey, we were far enough along that I ended up having to have surgery. So there was physical pain associated with this. And I remember I was laid out on my couch um, and I had both hands on my belly and I was just sobbing. All I could see, Shane, was the picture of the ultrasound with no life in it. The baby was there and the baby was not alive. There was no heartbeat. And all I could see was that ultrasound over, and it was just constant in my head. And I, I in the process of, of healing and, and um, moving on from, from this, I went to a Christian counselor regularly, and she uh, told me one day, I shared this with her, and she told me one day, uh, she said, Nicolette, I want you to take that image, and I want you to replace that image with the image that is true. And that is that Jesus is holding your baby in heaven. And I want you to picture that. Every time that ultrasound image comes into your mind, I want you to replace it with the truth. And so that was an image, but I think you do the same thing with thoughts, right? When a thought comes in your head that's not true, um, my worth is in being a mother. I don't have the title mama. What What does that mean for me? I've always wanted to be a mom. Um, I'm, I'm not worth much. When the ladies at church ask you, so when are you going to have kids? You know, those those kind of questions. Um, oh, you're young. Just pray a little bit harder. It'll work out for you. Uh, and, you know, it's like they mean well, but that's not really helpful. But that's the, the enemy just sticks those lies in your head. Oh, you're not believing enough. Oh, you don't have enough faith in God. That's why you're not getting pregnant. That's why you can't stay pregnant. Christians say some of the craziest things <laughs> in moments like that of anybody. They yeah. really do without thinking, um, you, you know, I'm having this sense. I tell people, you're like one of my adoptive daughters now. I, I want to just reach out and give you a hug and say, oh, it's going to be okay because that's what I would want to do with my daughters. Um, how did you deal with people that wanted to, that you felt you knew they wanted to respond in that moment, but but you, they clearly didn't know what to do. And all of a sudden, you're on, you're on, on again. You know, every time someone would come by, you would have to deal with, that person that wanted to respond but really didn't know what to say. I know a lot of people are like that or face that in their life. Mm-hmm. They they want to be cheerful. They want to, but every time someone comes by, it's sort of like a rewind to the moment of what they're dealing with. What would you say to that person? Remember where your identity comes from. And when your identity is is really rooted in being a daughter or a son of God, then it really changes the way you respond. You are able to give grace when that person says something that you know was well-intended, but it just didn't hit right. To me, a lot of times I wanted to just hole up and like not tell anybody about what we were going through because it was easier than facing all the comments, right? Uh, But God continually just had me bringing this story into the light. Um, and, And to this day, I have people reach out to me all the time. Hey, I, I just had a miscarriage. Do you have any advice for me? Hey, uh, we are struggling with infertility. How did you pray when you were going through that season? That's a question I get asked a lot. Do you have a devotional that you recommend for anybody walking through that season? So that vulnerability of allowing people to speak, even when it maybe wasn't just the right Thing to say, uh, I think allowed for God's work to happen in the long run. Uh, and now I have you know people that see us out in town or see us at church with my miracle girl, my absolute miracle girl. Uh, they say, "Oh, we prayed for you." And they'll just look at her, you know, and I know they did. And what a gift that is. And I would have missed out on that. And I believe that she's a direct answer to a lot of people praying uh, for us in that season. But it wasn't, it wasn't something Nicolette was doing. It wasn't something that Preston was doing. 
it was something that God was doing in that work, in that place. And people praying for you guys, I think, had a powerful effect on Josie Lou being here. I really do believe yeah. the power of that. So I want to shift it a little bit, though, because you've mentioned before that it's just as important to pray for others and for cheerfulness for others as it is to pray for cheerfulness for yourself. What do you mean by that and how do you do that? I think a huge part of choosing cheer uh, for me is cheering others on uh, and building up the world around us. So I think in a world that is constantly tearing each other down, it's important that we champion others. And so I think that um, when we pray for others, it is a way of advocating for them and of encouraging them and cheering them on in whatever situation they find themselves in. I find often, Shane, like even if it's a situation that you are just not comfortable with, like even like some of those comments that we got, right, uh, during that season— I can pray for those people. I could pray for those people in that time. And it would give me a softer heart towards the things that they said, right? Uh, when you pray for somebody, it gives you more grace, more forgiveness, uh, which allows you to be more cheerful. You don't go into a relationship or conversation with bitterness or with um, animosity or things like that. Uh, prayer helps eliminate that. Mm, I think that's so powerful because I do know of situations where um, it's not the same situation that you went through or that I've been through, but it's just the daily walk for people has gotten so uh, mucked up and just they're just slu- they're just in the sludge of life. Um, where do you think it matters just on the daily walk for us to be choosing cheer? Not in the big circumstances, not in the, the you know what I would call the major intersections of life and death and life and joy but just the normal everyday mattering, where do you think choosing cheer uh, hits? It is the difference of walking daily with Jesus. When we wake up in the morning and, and we talk to him before we talk to anybody else, it just sets us on a trajectory of joy. Like we are saying first thing in the morning, like I'm not living for myself. I am living for you, Jesus, today. And when in the little bitty moments throughout the day, we are looking for him. We've got our eyes open to him. And when you see him, then you can't help but be joyful because he meets us in the empty in the dishwasher. And we've been potty training at our house. He's been meeting us in the potty training, right? You'll never convince me that he's in potty training. And <laughs> I'm sorry, there's a limit to what Jesus can do. So. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but He's everywhere. He's where you are because His Spirit is in you. And when we're looking for Him at work in in the world around us and in people around us, then we have a reason to be joyful. Josie Lou's been learning the song at school, Shane, the old song. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And it's been such a balm to my heart of just going, just because you created this day, just because I have breath in my lungs this day, I have a reason to be joyful. I have a reason to have cheer. That's wonderful. Um, And I do, one of the things I do, enjoy uh, in working with you is you do have this um, just palpable sense of joy in your life. You you do see every situation with a, a sense of hope and a sense of joy. And that is, that, that is a beautiful thing. And it's also a thing that is very needed in our world um, yeah, for those of us who don't tend to be naturally joyful all the time. So, uh, and we do appreciate that. And we talk about it on the team a lot behind your back. So I hope you know <laughs> Um, one last question that we always ask every guest uh, that I think is has become an interesting kind of uh, peeking into how people see where they are and where God has them is, where do you think right now Nicolette Bell matters the most? That's so interesting. Immediately in my head, and I know you ask this question every episode. I don't know why I didn't think of my answer uh, beforehand. But when I think about that, there's so many different things that run through my mind, right? Like in my work, in uh, my marriage, in um, all these things, in my podcast, the different things that I'm doing, teaching, whatever, writing. Um, But I think where I matter most and where God has just placed me in this season is in being Josie Lou's mama. 
That is my number one calling right now, and I often get it out of order. It affects my joy when I get that out of order. I feel um, like I'm not... I don't have things in the right order, and that can cause you to feel less joyful. Um, But in this season, I am called to be her mama, and I am called to nurture her in joy and in cheer and raise her up to know the person of Jesus and to know that He is with her and that she doesn't have to be afraid um, and that she can count on Him and that He is our source of joy. And some days I do that really well, and other days um, I want to pull my hair out and— because I have a very strong-willed two-year-old, and my prayer is, Lord, please, somehow, would you use her attitude and her strong willingness <laughs> to be good in your kingdom? Because right now, this day, I don't see it. I don't really know how it's going to work, right? So it's hard, but on uh, any given day, that is where I feel like I matter the most in this season. I love it. And I, I just want to ask one extra thing of you, because God has put a couple things in my heart here in your answer, what would you say to the young woman or to the young man out there who who feel like they want to matter most as being parent to little Jane or Jimmy um, or whoever, whatever they named them, and they go, oh my gosh, I'm, I, I haven't gotten it right. I've gotten it out of order. What would you say first to that person or to those folks about getting it out of order? What would you say to them? I would just say you're not alone that it is like, just like choosing cheer, we've talked about, it's a daily choice. I would say for me, what's made a huge difference in my own parenting journey is praying for my family first. Um, I Like you said, Shane, I have a heart for praying for others. And so I would find in my prayer journal, I would go to the Lord and I would pray about all the things that uh, were bothering me at work, uh, what I was struggling with. I was asking for wisdom. And uh, then I would pray for all these other people. And then Josie Lou and Preston would get one little line at the bottom, you know, like, please be with them today, blah, 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 blah. And so I just flipped that in my prayers. And that became almost like a statement to my life of, okay, they are what's most important to me. And all of this other stuff comes uh, second to that. And that was like a declaration of me. So to me, so I would just say, you know, you're not alone that we all get it wrong, (laughs) wrong per se, who says what's right or wrong. We all get it wrong. We all feel like we get it wrong. Half the time in parenting, we're like, what in the world am I doing? And, you know, just to keep going, keep showing up and pray for your family. I have one last question, and that's before you thought you could have a baby. You'd been through everything, and you didn't know if you were going to be able to have a child before Josie Lou, the blessing of of her, came along. What would you say to the young woman out there who's trying to get pregnant, the young couple that's trying to get pregnant, and they just don't seem to be able to, 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 to experience that, What would you say about choosing cheer in the midst of that right now? Something I think about a lot, um, and I have several friends right now who are walking um, in in that journey, and I think that my, my number one piece of advice would be just to trust God's timing. He sees the big picture, and we only see just a dot on the scale. Um, and that he is, we want, we live in a world, Shane, that everything is just on our own timing. Like we make it happen, right? We um, put that post on Instagram and we get likes and we do this and we upload this immediately and we order something from Amazon and it sometimes can be there that day on our doorstep, right? And we just live in this society that's so used to a certain pace and it's not God's pace. And he just wants us to trust Him as the author and perfecter of life. And I think also we just want to acknowledge and know that infertility was not part of God's design. It is a result of the fall. It is a result of sin in the world. This is not ever how God intended it to be, but it's the reality of where we are. And just like Jesus said to His disciples, you're going to have trouble don't be surprised when it comes your way. But you can be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. The, the uh, God is bringing redemption and healing and life and miracles where the world isn't doing those things, right? And so God, uh, God is still working those things. And so I would just say, hold on and just trust His timing. That's beautiful. Well, friends, yeah, I know that you have, uh, uh, you feel about her now like I have. If you didn't know, uh, who Nicolette Bell was, but Nicolette Bell, uh, uh, host of an amazing podcast called Choosing Cheer. 
She's also part of the team, one of the primary teachers and host here at the JourneyWise Network. Thank you so much, Nicolette, for being on You Matter. Uh, and, and indeed, you do matter in, in so many ways and in places. Thank you so much. It's a joy. Thank you, Shane, for the message you send out week after week. It's making a difference. Well, thank you. So, friends, we hope that uh, this uh, podcast has meant something very special to you. Uh, remember, the lessons that we teach here are because God has found great worth in you. And therefore, because He thinks you matter, you do matter uh, in your daily walk and in your life. So go into the world and be salt and light. You do matter. God bless you. Friends, it's my honor and privilege to get to spend time with you week after week. It is such a joy that you would choose to be a part of our conversation here on the podcast. You are such an important part of what we do. If you like what you hear, I would invite you to share it, pass it along, text this episode to a friend, like, rate, and subscribe to our show. What you do makes a difference. And remember, friend, we're cheering you on.